Hey, what's going on guys? Jimmy here with One Road. Today, we're gonna to be tackling the rear end of my 2003 Chevrolet Suburban. We're gonna be putting in Bilstein 5100 shocks, as well as brand new Bilstein coil springs. <laughs> Now in my last video, we replaced both of the front shocks with brand new Bilstein 5100s. We took it on a test drive and I was shocked at just how much better those new Bilsteins performed. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at the old front shocks here, you can see one of them has completely failed and will not return to its original state and the other one is on its way out. Although this truck only has 78,000 miles on it, these shocks are 15 years old, installed from the factory. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that if the front shocks were that bad, the rear shocks must be just as bad. The thing is, is the rear shocks are special Nivomat auto adjusting shocks. So they actually provide some of the lift to assist the rear coil springs. Now, according to Bilstein's website, you can't just take these 5100 shocks and swap them out for the Nivomats because then the back end would sag. So what they recommend is replacing the rear coil springs as well. The part number on these new Bilstein coil springs is 199020. With that being said, the first thing we need to do is put the rear end up on jack stands. With the vehicle up on jack stands, I am now going to remove the two shocks. We're going to have one bolt at the top and one more bolt at the bottom. Okay, well this is kind of odd. I have to use a six inch extension on my half inch ratchet with 21 millimeter sockets. And uh, it's going slowly but surely. There we go. Got that sucker out. Okay. We got the top bolt out and here comes the Nivo mat shock right here. Okay, for comparison purposes, you can see the difference between the two. We have the Bilstein obviously on the bottom and the Nivo mat on the top. The Nivo mat seems to have a much thicker barrel than the Bilstein, but those shocks are very expensive to replace. And so I think the Bilsteins are much more affordable and going to ride much better. Okay, so we were able to get both of the rear Nivo mat shocks out. Here they are, you can see compared to the new Bilstein shock. Now what I'm gonna try to do is drop the rear axle enough so that the coil springs will come right out. I'm hoping that's what happens anyways. Okay, so here goes the jack. Okay. Oh yeah, these springs are loose. Can you guys see that? Right there. Look at that. Awesome. We'll reuse this cap and we will get these out of here. Here you can see the difference between the stock original coil spring and the Bilstein. They seem to be just about the same length. The Bilstein might be a tad longer. So it should, theoretically, fit right back up in there. Now it might take some wiggling here, but I think it's going to fit just fine. Yep, there we go. Perfect. It just sits right on that hat that was already there. And up here, it's actually got tons of room. So what I'm gonna have to do is jack up the jack with the other spring installed, slowly but surely, making sure this stays lined up until there's enough pressure to hold it in place. All right, so this is the passenger side and I'm going to attempt again, just to slide her right into position. I don't think I'll have an issue. Just hope that rubber hat doesn't fall off. Let's see here, get up in there. Okay, just like that. Okay guys, so I am currently going through the process of jacking up the rear end little by little and making sure that everything is seated correctly on each side as I jack it up. This side's in good. Okay guys, so the two springs are in and the only thing I have left to do is to bolt up the new shocks. Here we are on the driver's side and again, I just wanna get the bolt started through the top. And we'll get that nut on there. All right guys, I'm not gonna lie, definitely doesn't hurt to have an air tool available to get this thing zipped on real quick. So let's get this into place. We're in the forward position. Good to go. Okay, so in order to get 
the bottom of the shock into position. You're just gonna have to use some muscle. Get that sucker in there. Start your bolt and push her through. Get that nut on there started. Grab your adjustable wrench and here we go. Okay, so there you can see the entire shock is installed. We got the bottom in and the top in. We also have the springs in, fairly tight. And the last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and lower down our rear end, but of course, make sure nothing is under the tires. And with that jack out of the way, the shocks themselves are holding the rear end just enough to keep our coil springs pretty tight in there until we get these rear tires on the ground. So I'm just gonna jack this thing up. Remove jack stand on one side, lower it down slowly. Okay, the Suburban is now off of jack stands and now what we're gonna do is take it out on a drive and test the difference between the Nivomat shocks and the new Bilsteins with the coil springs. Here we are driving the Suburban and we are going to go back to the same spot that we had hit some speed bumps when we did the front shocks and we're gonna really try to hit them at a good speed to see how they compare to the old shocks. So far, just driving on a normal road, everything seems pretty much the same. I can't really tell a huge difference. Of course, there's no big bumps or anything that would really work the shocks. As for the springs in the back, I don't feel them being extra hard or anything like that. They seem basically the same. Okay, so here we go on another speed bump. Gonna hit it pretty fast. Wow, very, very controlled. Okay, so we're coming up to another speed bump here. And here we go. Wow, doing 25. Unreal, that is awesome. Wow, you've seen me put on the front shocks. You've now seen me put on the rear as well as the rear springs. Granted, I've only had them on for all of one day, and in the case of the rear shocks, they've been on for all of 30 minutes now. So I really don't have an extreme point of view on these shocks. I do know, based off of my 1995 Suburban with the Bilstein 4600s, I've had those on there for years now. Absolutely love them. If these shocks perform anywhere near as good as those, which I'm pretty confident they will, I will be absolutely happy. These Suburbans are big, heavy vehicles and they do need very good dampening shocks. Those old shocks, as you saw, were torched. They did not work anymore. They did not return to their original position once compressed. Wow, that's awesome. And so I chose to replace all the shocks and the two springs in the back. Hey, listen guys, if you enjoyed this content, there's gonna be many more like it. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. It takes a half of a millisecond. Also subscribe to my channel if you like it and make sure you check the description section below for links, not only to these shocks, but also to the first video I did installing the front shocks. I'm pretty stoked right now, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive my truck around, but until the next video, peace out.